Aloha and welcome back to Cranking Out Crafts. Happy New Year and I'm very excited to share with you today Color Burst from Ken Oliver, which is a watercolor powder that we'll be using and showing you about all the wonderful products. So the first project that I'm going to work on is this Ken Oliver, these are cards, watercolor cards, 140 pound weight for the watercolor cards. And I just love them. They're able to hold the water really well. And I'm using his spray bottle, which the spray bottle can spray fine mist or it can shoot it in a stream. So that's really nice feature on that. So we are going to take this watercolor card and lay out some stencils that I cut out with acetate. And I'm just going to lay these fun things around. And I cut these out with the Sizzix machine with acetate. So you can make your own stencils or you can buy stencils that are already made. So I'm just going to line it up like that and then give it a nice spritz of water. We call this spritz and sprinkle and be generous with it. And then I'm going to take the orchid color of Color Burst and tap, tap, tap. Oh, look how pretty that is. Ooh, things are happening. Okay, let's do another color. So this one is alizarin crimson and I'll give it a little tap and some colors come out quicker than others. So you just, as you're tapping, you discover how much you need to tap or if you need a heavier hand with it and watch it react. So pretty, all these things happening. And this card will actually have things on the backside to make it more interesting as well. All right, let's do also this color violet, which violet, comes out really dark. Love it. This is really fun for kids to watch too. You just have to watch how much they're using. <laughs> now that we have this section here, I'm going to gently remove the stencil. And voila, you have this beautiful image and I'm going to carefully move it on the side. Now I'm going to take this image right here. We're going to do the reverse. And actually, I, I think I just want the hearts. No, let's do everything. A little bit to the side. This is a fun part. All right, lay that down. Then I take a large paper towel roll and smush it. This is pretty too. And then we can remove it. Now, if it doesn't turn out the beautifully perfect image you want, you can also use that as a background. There was a lot on this one, so we're gonna give it another try on another one and see how that looks. You can press this down like that and see if we get another really nice image. I'm going to roll and peel off. This I will definitely use for tags or backgrounds on another card. So we are going to go ahead and show you how to put one of these cards together. And this was a nice background that I had before. And I just cut up some of these pieces that we had. I'll take my double-sided tape and like this. Very easy, but if you are a crafter like I am, we are afraid to throw anything away. So all of these backgrounds <laughs> you can utilize together and make a cute little card, something like that. Now when I spritz, I'm seeing all this extra color left on my mat. Things that you can do with that. Ken Oliver also sells these tags and this is one of my favorite things to do. It's watercolor tags and I press and then I get a lovely background. Now with this, once it dries, you can also add 
your lettering to it and add it as a component for your card. So this is still really, really good paint left on your mat, or you can just wipe it off and you can see how easily that comes up. So another feature about this wonderful mat, you can use either side. It is um, heat resistant, so when you use your heat gun, you don't have to worry about it burning or warping your mat. It will always lay flat too, even if you roll it up and store it rolled up. Very easy cleanup. If I have a puddle of water here, I can just take my napkin and wipe it up very easily. You can also use it for hot glue gun and also resin. So this is a terrific mat, best ever. Really holds to its name. The next tool that I'm gonna show you about is the Ken Oliver um, spray bottle, which can do a stream or you can adjust it and do a nice spritz all over the place. And I'm just gonna clean that up one more time before we get started. So for those of you that want a little more control with your watercolor and doing something like this, more of a traditional watercolor painting, you can also use Color Burst. And the vibrancy of these colors is amazing. I'm using here the media, uh, watercolor media card from Ken Oliver, and it's 140 pound watercolor paper. And I just laid it flat. I'm going to take a little bit of water. I would usually just use pencil to outline this, but I wanted to make sure you could see it on camera. I'm using a very generous amount of water around my koi and just getting really close to the edge, almost touching it. And really close. Wanna make sure that the first little bit of water that I touched earlier is still puddling. You want it, you want a nice little puddle in there. I'm taking the ultramarine blue and I'm just going to tap in the puddle portions so Color Burst can do its thing and react. And if it doesn't go everywhere that I want it to, I just take my brush and give it a little push in some areas. But I don't want to totally go in like this because I think it really ruins that beautiful color burst reaction that it was made for. So just touching a little bit here and there and then letting it dry. I spend more time, I think, telling my students to stop and wait <laughs> than I do um, teaching. It's really about letting the watercolor do its own thing. So we let that dry. Again, you can use your heat gun dry it that way or be patient and dry it, let it dry on its own. So now I'm gonna use tangerine, but I'm using it again in a more traditional way. I'm going to just put a little squirt right there in my palette and then a dab of water. You need to let this dry completely, but I'm not actually gonna to touch the blue portions. I want you to see how vibrant that color is though. I'm gonna go ahead and paint, do a little swatch beautiful and then maybe another little color here but you can really control it when you put it in the palette and control how much color you're using keep it darker with less water and you'll go lighter with more water so here's another example you can use micron pen after and again it turns out beautifully and very very vibrant we love Color Burst.